This here is Apple Mac Mini, and it's known as the mini computer, very small computer. Suddenly, now, this guy doesn't seem so mini anymore. And this PC, it's not just smaller, it's better almost at every single way. Don't believe me? Well, stick around till the end of the video. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method, including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. So let's take a look at these devices just from the outside. As you can see, this here is about quarter of the size of the Mac Mini. And this is called the Geekcom A7, and it's got the Ryzen 7940HS CPU inside, which is a very powerful CPU actually. We'll do a test in a minute. Now I know that the Apple has the power supply inside this device, whereas in here we have the external device, but I'd argue I don't think many people care about that. In fact, having a power supply inside a PC will make the PC or computer even warmer because the power supply heats up and the heat will be conducted to the CPU. Whereas here, we don't have that problem. Looking at the front of the device, on Mac, we don't have anything, just a tiny little lamp. Whereas on the Geekcom A7, we have the power switch, headphone and mic combo jack, two USB type A ports, both of them 10 gigabits in speed. So moving on the side, we can see we have vents on the Geekcom A7, nothing on the, the Mac mini. On the other side, we have an SD card reader, which we don't have on the Mac mini and some more vents. And moving on the back of the device, things get really, really interesting now. Have a look at this IO that's packed into this tiny little guy here. On Apple, we have two USB 2.0 ports in here for your keyboard and wireless mouse and whatever. On Windows, we have one USB 2.0 and one USB 3 that's 10 gigabits in speed. So the same mount in the back, not considering the front there as well, but faster. On Mac, we've got one HDMI, on Windows, we have two HDMI ports. On Mac, we have two USB Type-C's, both of them Thunderbolt 4. On the A7, we've got two USB Type-C's, one of them USB 4, which is 40 gigabits in speed, and then one of them 10 gigabits in speed, but both of them support display outputs. Then we've got an Ethernet port, which is one gigabits in speed on the Mac. And on Windows side, we also have an Ethernet port, which is 2.5 gigabits in speed, two and a half times faster. So I'd argue the Windows PC has better ports. The only downside is that there's two Thunderbolt 4 ports here, apart from one USB 4 is pretty much the same as Thunderbolt 4, if that makes sense. And the bottom of the device, very similar as well. But let's take a look how do these guys compare then. Firstly, let's talk about the price for these two. The Mac Mini base model starts at $599. And as you can see, if we just upgrade the storage from 256 gigabytes to 512, we have to pay extra $200 and we are at $800. Now, if you do want to get a little bit more storage, two terabyte storage and 24 gigabytes of RAM, we're talking about $1,800. On this side, this Geekcom A7 costs $849 on Amazon. And if you go through the links in the description below to Geekcom's website, you can get it even cheaper. And I believe there's a discount code in the description below as well that you can use. But that costs $850. But for that, you actually get quite a lot of things. So if you're looking at the specs here, we have 32 gigabytes of RAM, we have a two terabyte SSD, and we have a Radeon 7800M graphics with the 7940HS CPU, which seems like we're getting quite a good deal on this guy, as you can see. So let's take a look at some of the benchmarks. First, we have Cinebench R24, and let's do the multi-cores test to see which is better. The M2, which is eight cores, uh, or the Ryzen 9, which also has eight cores. The Ryzen has multi-threading though, but the Mac on the M2 doesn't. So the Ryzen 7940HS has completed, and as you can see, 
we've got 923 points on the multi-core score. You can see we're quite a bit faster than the Ryzen 7 5800X desktop variant, which pulls a lot more power. So as you can see, technology has advanced quite a bit. So let's take a look if Apple's completed. Not yet. We're going to have to wait a little longer. So I completed all the benchmarks now that I wanted to show. So let's take a look which of these devices has the better performance. Firstly, looking at Cinebench R23 then, uh, you can see the A7 got 108 on single and 923 on the multi-core scores. And you can see the M2 Mini on Cinebench R24 is actually slightly faster on the single core score. But on the multi-core score, the M2 Mini is 36% slower. As you can see, eight cores on Mac and eight cores on Windows aren't quite equal. In Geekman 6, we can see the M2 Mini is 28 and 34% slower in the single and multi-core scores. Here now, the single core is actually slower, which is very interesting. Moving on to Blender, and this is the Blender CPU test. I tried to do it on GPU, but both of these devices crashed when doing the GPU test, so I left that one out. The M2 Mini is 30.8% slower in the monster scene, 82% slower in the junk shop scene, and 37% slower in the classroom scene. I guess it's fair to say that in Blender, the Windows machine wins again. In Adobe Photoshop, and this is Puget Bench for creators, you can see the M2 Mini gets another big L. It's 22.7% slower in the overall scores, 21.3% slower in the general score, and 24% slower in the filter score. So for photo editing, the Windows machine again wins. What about video editing? I did the same Puget Bench for Creators test for Premiere Pro, but for some reason, the benchmark does crash on the Mac device. On the A7, we're getting 3,423 score on the standard overall score, which is not necessarily good. And when you plan to do some video editing, I'd highly recommend choosing the Mac Mini because the video editing is better on there just because of the media engines on Apple device and there. If you want to do some more complex video editing, it's probably a little bit better on the Mac device. At the same time, if you do want to do video editing, it's completely doable on the Geekcom as well. I'd probably just think that it's a more fluid experience with that one, but completely doable on Geekcom as well. So if you're doing just some simple 4K video editing and splicing some video, putting that together, it's very good at doing that. There's no problem. It's gonna handle it anyway. But I just think if you compare the video editing between them two, the Mac might be a little bit better, especially if you upgrade the RAM. At the same RAM configuration of eight gigabytes, I might actually lean towards the Geekcom A7. In terms of GPU benchmarks, now, neither of these are very, very powerful GPUs. And if you want to do some gaming, I'm not going to do any gaming in here. The Geekcom's going to win because that's better GPU in there. The AMD Radeon GPU is better. That's what this is made for. The M2 is an okay GPU as well. But there's one thing I would like to check, which is the power draw. Now, I'd like to go to Cinebench R24 here. And we're going to start the multi-core score on Windows device as well as on the Mac device. So here we can see the wattage drawn by the Mac mini. I can see the package is around 16, 17, 17.5 17 watts maximum pulled. 18 watts now is where we're peaking, but under 20 watts power draw, okay? And the faster the fans are gonna start to go on the Mac mini, the faster it's gonna start to, or the more power it's gonna start to pull, but the fans are gonna kick in when it's 100 degrees, so we've got quite a lot to get till that point. And the efficiency is quite okay as well. I'm looking from the wall, I'm pulling about 22.5 watts right now. So there's extra five watts that comes from power supply and efficiency and so on. So the Mac is pretty good there. Less than 20 watts from software we're measuring. But the Windows device here, as you can see, we're getting we're pulling up to 60 watts. So it's boosts to 60 watts, but then uh, kind of settles around 45 watts. So that's twice the power draw what we're getting from this Windows device. Interesting that we have a much smaller cooler on a device that pulls twice the power, but we're still able to handle it. Now, there are higher temperatures, about 88 degrees here, as you can see. Whereas on Mac, we're only around 70 degrees and the fans are idle. I can definitely hear the fans on this guy here, but not on the Mac. So I'd say for power efficiency, 
the Mac is going to win that. Now, it wouldn't be a tech notice video if we didn't actually open up the device and see what's inside. By the way, the device comes with a very, very nice and compact charger. Now, I know that this is actually inside the Mac Mini, but these two together are still smaller to than a Mac mini. This is a 120 watt charger and FSB is very, very good power supply manufacturer. And as you can see 120 watts, it can provide for this device. What a nice, beautiful device. And as you can see, there's no screws visible, but I bet these are behind or underneath these and voila. And it comes off like that. So we can see that there are antennas attached to the bottom cover there. So probably Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. Let's take this cover off so we could see what's underneath. Now, would you look at that? There is also an actual heat sink on here that will cool the SSD down. And as you can see, this is the Acer N5000 SSD. Now, I was a little bit uncareful here and I actually pulled one of the antennas off but that's very, very easy to fix because we'll just take the M.2 SSD off. And as you can see, it's very easily replaceable if you wanted to do that. So what we can also see here is the SD card reader, obviously that comes in from the side, which is very nice. Seems like Geekom is applying this to quite a lot of their mini PCs, the SD card reader, which for creators, I'm very much enjoying that. And we have a crucial sodium sticks. So this is DDR5. 16 gigabytes per stick and this is 5600 megatransfers per second very easily upgradable if you want to do that now i don't see any screws in here and the actual cpu and the cooler is on the other side that sucks in air from the sides and blows out from that side i highly recommend checking out the geekom it13 video where we actually saw the other side of it as well where we could screw that off but in here i don't want to pull this out because i might damage this there's no upgrades that you can add to it. You can change the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, card here as well if you wanted to, because that's another M.2 card. So upgrade it to Wi-Fi 7 if you wanted to, or upgrade the M.2 SSD. But I don't think there's any four terabyte SSDs that are one-sided because you can't have it dual-sided. It has to be something that only has the chips all on the top because underneath we don't have room to actually put it there. So unfortunately, you do have only one SSD, but it is easily changeable or replaceable, which you can't do on the Mac. Nothing on the Mac is upgradable, at least for normal people, only for some serious scientists who want to solder some stuff and have serious engineering skills. Here, you can just pop a new ones in, voila. Let's put all these stickers back in there. As good as new. So then, which one should you be getting? Now, if you are a Mac OS fanboy and you can't live without that, I guess go with that one. I probably can't change your mind. But if you are a little bit more open-minded, then I think this guy here offers a lot more for your money and a lot more performance, a lot of more expandability ports, everything. So I think this is very interesting guy to check out. And in fact, I think this is the type of size that Apple should have made their Mac Mini because as you can see, it looks like a Mac giant compared to this Geekom Mini PC. In fact, this packs so much performance in just the palm of your hand, you really can't believe it. It's absolutely insane. With all the ports, everything, I like it. And I like the design direction they're going for. Minimal Mac Mini kind of design, as you can see, this is good. Go check it out in the video description below. And if you want to reach out for any questions, advice about PC builds, you can reach out on Minect. It's also linked in the description below.